like I'm not so tired I just feel the pressure of the things that I have in mind I wanted peace, I wanted to be fine I wonder why I cannot just sit for a while I really want to see what it looks like To have a moment I know that I would be mine When the wind is all closed Like a picture of the time When the future is the hope You're looking for Save me from everything Tell me where to find my way I'm just looking for something I can make in another day Cause I'm falling down Fading away Cause I'm falling down This is what I know I just keep on running Always working fast and hard Never thinking about now Believing I'm happy thanks to I do believe we're live. I'm Xtremes and with me is Hayes and we're doing some high school esports league and knife rounds going on right now. Don't care. <laughs> Come on, man. You've got to give some credit to the knife round. It, it, it's got a say in the game. Yeah, I guess it does. Well, <laughs> we're going to have our say on the game, of course, with the commentators. So we'll talk all yeah. about it and we do appreciate you guys for joining us on a Friday night. And I actually didn't think that we'd be changing the map. I wouldn't have actually jumped back in if we were going to look at a, a, map, a, a map loading screen. I do apologize for that. Well, it's okay. Um, we are, of course, uh, covering Westville versus Parklands, and I don't know, really know who to go for here because I have family in Durban who live very close to West Westville, and I also lived in Tableview for a time in Cape Town, which is right next to Parklands. So I don't know. Where, where should my allegiance go, Hayes? Um, oh, sorry. We lost there we you go. there for a second. I don't know. All right. Can you hear me again? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was uh, nice. I was just asking yeah. which which team are, are you going for here, man? Ah, oh, I I like to uh, be a supporter of winners, and um, I got a feeling. I mean, you know what? I'm gonna go two ways here. The first one is I recognize a couple guys more probably on Parkland's team, but my girlfriend's dad went to Westville Boys, so I'm not sure how that would go down if they were listening to this and I said I was supporting Parkland. So I, I'm probably going to have to be a little bit objective with this one uh, and go with Parkland's, but I'm not sure how that's going to go down with them. Okay. Uh, is, do you just back the players a little bit more? In, on <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. It's a pretty superficial basis because uh, I don't really know too much about these teams. Uh, but where would you put your money if, you're, if there was such a thing? I put my money on nobody. And that, that sounds crazy, but there is actually a player called Nobody. So uh, he's with Westfall. Um, he, he's pretty good. Al although if I if I look at the lineup, um, I was going for the joke. If I look at the lineups, uh, Parklands do look maybe a little bit stronger. I recognize a couple of the players as well. But it's interesting to me that we're covering a high school game where there are players here that we've we've covered in other competitions, which I would not would not necessarily have expected. Yeah, uh, I think it's a fair point you make. Uh, especially considering the last high school game we covered, we weren't too familiar with the players. But uh, yeah, going into this one, quite a few recognizable names, which gives us a little bit more background to work with. Uh, it's a little bit difficult sometimes to give really decent insights into a game when uh, you aren't too familiar with the players. So hopefully that just gives us a bit more depth this cast. Yeah, we would hope so. Our first ever high school game was last week. I've never done one before. You'd never done one before. And also, I think... This week was the first time we, we ever casted online together. We were always in a studio casting together. Yeah, but uh, as I alluded to last time you said that, how that's uh, incredibly uncharacteristic because <laughs> I'm pretty sure most casting pairs have a bounce online before they actually end up uh, in a studio. Wasn't our first another. game a grand final in New South Africa? Uh, I would trust your memory over my one. So I I'm remember Sonic go with, yes. on Inferno. <laughs> wow. This. Was, was that with the AWP uh, when you wrapped around onto Banana? Yes. Yes, I remember that one as well. That was Jeez. actually uh, that was a solid uh, solid ace. <laughs> <laughs> it was a solid ace. Jeez, so, so solid so that it's back. been burnt into my memory. Yeah, we do go back. But um, 
Dust 2 is our map this evening. That's a map that goes back a long way with Counter-Strike. And something interesting I was actually thinking about is a lot of the new players who started playing Counter-Strike Global Offensive while Dust 2 was uh, part of the inactive map pool wouldn't necessarily establish us two as the backbone of Counter-Strike and it would just be, it was a bit of a weird thought to me that there's going to be people playing this game that don't see us two as the grandfather of Counter-Strike. That is a really weird point to think because I mean, I, I think back to Counter-Strike 1.3 and, and go like, well, Dust 2, of course, right? Yeah, exactly. If you remember playing Dust 1, Dust 2, that was back in the day when we would play Dust 1 in, in competitive, which I kind of wish I could expunge from my memory because I'm just not <laughs> yeah. good for that. I'm very glad that I wasn't around in that time frame, at least not playing competitively, because uh, that must have been a bit of a nightmare. Not great, but Dust 2 is one of the greats. It's probably the most iconic map in in probably multiplayer gaming in general. I, yeah, I, I sure. think, you know, average p uh, people who don't really necessarily know about that much about Counter-Strike, but our gamers probably have heard of Dust 2. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's fair enough. Many, uh, many duels and battles have been dealt with and sorted out on this uh, battlefield. And um, I'm glad that it's back into the map pool. And I'm also glad that Cobblestone was the one that received the boot. I feel oh, like so Cobble much. needs a lot of work to reach its potential uh, as a competitive map. And I like the changes that they've made on Dust. Um, specifically just making the door a little bit wider. I like the changes that they've made in Long as well. So it's been, there's a couple of small things. Um, I mean, I think a few people are expecting a bit of an overhaul, which isn't something that they really ever uh, alluded to or promised what they would be doing. So I think we just got some high expectations. Uh, at the end of the day, there's still just a rework of Dust 2, not really a Dust 3 that they were going to be bringing out. Yeah, I think you couldn't really change it too much. It has a few controversial elements like the doors are one of it's one of the features of the map but it's also one of the few maps that allow us a, a ct to essentially die to a terrorist in the first five seconds of yep. the round you know which sure. i don't know that that has its it has its pros and its cons I, I personally think it's a pretty good thing just to, to spice it up a little bit the map i do think in its previous iteration could get a bit stale in terms of the, the strategy around it but it's still somehow you know despite the the strategic limitations always delivered amazing games you know that's that's yeah. something you can't really say for cobble cobble was always just you know r rush b 10 runs and uh, yeah. do something a bit slower the other five and you, you're probably going to win t-side it, it really lacked in variation so I, th I think dust with the changes to long as well it's, it's made it a little easier for the cts I, I think we can still see new innovations and that's the thing about cs in general you know it's like like a lot of sports um you know the rules don't change too much the playing field stays more or less the same but strategies evolve and you know it's yeah, sure. down to the, the innovation of the players, the tacticians, the coaches, everything. And I'm excited to see if we, we're going to see some of that because this is yeah. probably a new map for these kids. Well, let's see what uh, what these teams have innovated for this pistol round as we are about to get going here. A couple players with armor on the CT side. Nobody's got that kit and the HE grenade as well. Always like to see the investments in the kit from one of the CT players. And on the side of Parklands, we've got four sets of armor and an upgraded pistol which is uh, the CZ and they're going straight from middle which is quite interesting generally you want to avoid this region of the map against the USPs early on but uh, they are throwing all textbooks out the window and making their way very aggressively finding the first pick as well that's going to be splitting the remaining CTs and uh, wow they just want to take jewels all over at this point and in fact Ooh. they've blown the door wide open on the B-bomb sites and there is only one player remaining uh, not anymore <laughs> <laughs> not anymore jeez I kind of felt like Cheetah Boy needed to get a little bit more done there from his position because uh, if he'd gotten a kill or two, I think things would have stalled out. But the fact that he maybe didn't take such an aggressive fight there didn't really give his teammates that much yeah. opportunity to come in on the rotate. So Yeah, I mean, that's, that's sorry to interrupt you. That's one of the most difficult things about this map is controlling middle as a CT. And a lot of times you'll see players just playing for information and really just not going for the fights at all. But in that case, he wasn't even playing for the information. <laughs> One nearly uh, getting getting himself wrecked there at the hands of the CZ, but he adjusts in time, thankfully for for himself. The Tizio uh, was a pretty good start. So Parklands, uh, I don't know if people are favoring them in this. Let us know in chat. Is, is Parklands going to win? Is it going to be Westfall? Parklands with a good start, though. Yeah, and uh, 
just by the nature of the second round here, you can see that they've actually got a bit of patience and structure about them. Uh, I got to chat to KW a bit and he told me that they don't really practice or anything like that. And they've got a couple of players, maybe seven or eight guys that they can just pick the team out of from who's available. So it's not like there is an immense amount of practice that goes into these teams, but these guys do get a lot of individual play when they go home and whatnot. So the skill level is certainly up there. And you can see them looking for this B split once again, pushing through tunnels, coming up through middle. It's really difficult to try and counter this as the CTs. As you can see, they're trying to make a play, pushing through lowers or, or rather through tunnels, but not going to work out for Aloof. Yeah, he's got Oof in his name, and that's probably what just happened to him there, unfortunately. <laughs> JFK yeah. shot first. That is a very creative name. He knows his history. Clearly at his school, that uh, history is being taught correctly. And he's made history of two players, yeah? <laughs> he has certainly put KW and Black to bed. And uh, I'm not sure how much more he can get done in this round, but kills certainly would be welcomed. He's got the MAC-10 as well, and uh, as we know, that gives a nice monetary boost for each frag that you get. He goes straight into the sights, and he actually lands the dink, I think, onto Marion there, but uh, still able to take him down. So, 2-0 is the scoreline, surviving the shenanigans, and going to be one more eco for the CTs. Indeed. Uh, thanks to everybody who's tuned in, 45 of you. Apparently more people are interested in high school esports league than uh, BS Masters. What the heck? I'm not... I'm, I'm confused. Thank you for showing up, guys. Well, I mean, it's an interesting concept that we've now uh, brought forward is covering this high school um, Counter-Strike. And what a great thing to do. And uh, it, it brings in a whole new dynamic of the audience base as well. As you can see, a very aggressive hit coming into BKF1, leading the charge. The MAC-10 takes on one, goes for the clock. No point in reloading. 180s, but uh, not going to be enough there. So he still gets taken down. Jeez, he's and, making uh, hard what? work of that. Moose? Surely he's going to go down. Sort of just waiting for the next round to start, but... <laughs> Just delays it that much. So here comes the first buy round for the CTs. <laughs> yeah, some of the comments, very entertaining. Keep it up, guys. And so far, it's been all one-way traffic. Yeah, Parkland's in, in a pretty good position. Westfall, well, they could have uh, potentially bought you, but I, I guess they've decided they want to actually go with something like a double or potentially and have a bit more utility. Yeah, very unconventional to be not buying in the fourth round. So we're going to have to see how this works out for them. And all that it means is it's... Uh, their next buy round is going to be made that much more important. They've just invested an extra save into it, so they're really going to have to come out with the win in that next round. As you can see, the terrorists are expecting a buy here, so they're playing very passively. Going to be going for that A hit, three players towards long. And, uh, well, now the jig is going to be up. They're still up against the eco, only pistols on the CTs. And uh, it's all about just pushing and playing off of one another at this point. Oh, aloof, somehow getting the kill. I didn't think he would, considering he got shot first. Yeah, uh, speaking of shot first, here's Mr. JFK catching a grenade, but uh, terrorists realize there's no need to be taking this jewel, and they just leave him in the back lines there. Excuse me, as they take a control. And uh, it's just an opportunity to try and find an exit frag, boost the economy going into the next round. You can see that they have got on average about $4,000 across the board. So, Mike. What do, what are we to expect from these guys on the uh, on the first buy round from the CTs? Because uh, this has been a map internationally, which has been favouring the CT side. Yeah, which is weird because you you consider it was heavily T sided in uh, in the, the previous version, probably going back to the mid two thousands. So yeah, yeah, it's, I, I think some of the changes have certainly helped them out, particularly at long, because there never used to be that much cover that you could work with. Now there's a little bit more and double orb. That's uh, that's what there I predicted. Is. Yep. Well. Uh... That's a good prediction you made, as it that has come to light. Easy one. Easiest prediction <laughs> of my life. Yeah, I think that was one of the more basic ones that you've had to make. So, another default coming out here from the terrorist to Loof, though, putting that AWP to good use as he finds a pick in middle. And uh, that's really going above and beyond as to what I was speaking about earlier. It's really a difficult area to try and control as the CTs and keep tabs. And AWP, of course, is the favored weapon, but even so, so much p potential to be flashed and uh, double peek people can peek close uh, without any prior notice so certainly a, a position that's going to be up for a lot of battles kw with the picture of a wizened old master will he play like a wizened <laughs> old master we shall see yeah i'm not sure how many people are going to recognize andreas in that one that's sent from bravado and oh catching them in the back is moose but uh, makes a meal of it and, oh, oh geez, he just Luf looking a for a headshot as well. Yeah, I thought that was actually going to connect. Not to be, though. The terrorists looking a little bit flustered. Yeah, they're not really getting too much done. 50 seconds left on the clock. 
KW making his way towards middle. He's got a teammate there as well. They're going to go for the mid smoke, try and cross up towards short. There is only two players on A at the moment for the CTs, uh, and two more starting to make their way across. So they've got a really good hold on this A bomb site with potential for quick rotations. Up short they go, looking for some sort of engagement and finding themselves a nade and an orb to Kobe coming out. And another shot from JFK shot first. Some fantastic work towards long from him there. And finally around here for Westfall. They're in this game, guys. Yeah, not only around, but they also kept the double AWP as well as all five players alive. So that's going to bode really well for their economy. And just going back to that point I made about deciding to save for that extra round is uh, going to be playing out very powerfully for them now in terms of their economy. As uh, there's AKs across the board for the terrorists, and they still have a bit of cash left in the bank. If they get a plant down in this round, they should be able to buy up in the next. And Aloof finds another good pick in middle there onto KW, so that's going to be hindering the T side nice and early here. And uh, Dust is a map that you want in numbers as the T side because there is a lot to get done. Yeah, a lot of space, a lot of long distances as well, which is in contrast to most other maps aside from maybe Overpass. He doesn't pass him over there, he drops him. Yeah, puts him to bed. In fact, nobody does get to dig through the door. That's not going to stop him, though, for going for the information play. And uh, goes one further, finds the frag as well. Moose times his push nicely through tunnels as well. Takes down Scrubby. And uh, there's the first frag in two rounds. Well, this one and the past for the T's. Juan finally getting on the board. And uh, maybe looking for a bit more, but I'm not sure what his hopes are in this round. Not high, what one wouldn't think. I keep wanting to call him something else because, of course, we did ESL the other day and there was another player with a very similar name. Oh, yeah, he sees Juan the shadow. Flatru. He knows it. Yeah, he does know indeed, and he connects. Not without taking a few bullets of his own, though. 40 seconds left on the clock. Not a ton of potential for him. And uh, it might be wise for him to go for the save here. Take this AK into the next round, especially considering their economic situation. But uh, JFK shot first. Not even going to give him that decision. He just lobs the nade in there, and, well, that's going to be a nade kill again. The double AWP lives, which I think is good for the economy, of course. But I'm sure most of you know CS. If you don't, and yet your parents join, uh, joining to watch, which we did actually have last week. Chat, be nice. Don't say nasty things, please. <laughs> the, the, his grandmother's watching. <laughs> I actually have no idea. But uh, if, if they are, welcome, guys. That we appreciate be you being here. Yeah, I'd love that, man. Um, another great shot there in middle by Aloof. This guy is making waves in middle very early on. And what that means is it's going to be sending shivers through the ranks of the terrorists for the rest of the half. They're going to be a lot more hesitant to be aggressive towards middle, peek him, and take the jewels with him. So building himself a nice early confidence base. Yep, and of course Westfall on the CT side, Parkland's on the T side. Good start. Ooh, spots the, the cross. Nobody dies somehow, but... Don't know if it's a good idea for the terrorist to stick around in one. Well, he's only going to take one shot, and it's going to hit him in the head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all that was required. That AWP, one shot to the head, does a monumental amount of damage. Nobody spotting a player towards the top of mid as well. Black whiffing his shots, though. He does get some bites at the apple. And there is only one more player on long, so if you could find this kill, that would put him in uh, stead for a free bomb site, though, fortunately for Westville. He does stay alive on the A-bomb site, so now there's only two players left on the CT side, and they're getting boxed in as well. So it's surely just a matter of time before they succumb, and it is indeed. Down they go. Double AWP will be retained, so nothing really lost there for, for Westfall. Westfall now within one of Parklands. Parklands had a really good start, but Westfall almost gifted them that, that fourth, though. you got you got to think, considering they they went for an extra save. So Yeah, but we can't really... Uh fault that considering oh, no. how well they've done in the past three rounds um building up a really strong base on their economy now a couple players above five thousand four thousand dollars so if they could get this buy round that's going to put them in strong stead to pull away in this half of course on the ulterior side or the opposite side parklands are going to be looking to bounce back here and try and put a stop to this uh bit of momentum coming through for westfield boys yeah, definitely. Three on the trot. It was four in a row at the beginning there for, for Parklands, but they haven't really had much of a play. We've seen rounds here where there's barely been a kill for the guys from Cape Town, and there's another player spotted. Nobody's so aggressive here in mid always, and it's going to pay off yet again. There's a reply, though. Yeah, nice frag there. Finally, they do get on the board before things get out of control the ter for the terrorists, that is, and... They're still not really getting much map control here to work with in the early stages of the round. You can see very passive from them, 
when they decide to go long, it's usually a late take in the round. And what that means is the counter-terrorists can get 